History Africa was really um, um, a brainchild of uh, the African Society of Human Genetics. What we wanted to achieve uh, from the umbrella of the African Society is really we were very concerned that the, of the limited participation of, of African scientists and also Africans uh, you know, in genomics research. And so we did not want the genomic revolution uh, to again fly over Africa uh, without adequate participation. Key people involved there were, were really pushing this is Charles Rotimi and Bongani Moyosi was involved from the beginning as well. From the NIH, Francis Collins and Eric Green. And then from the Wacom Trust, um, Mark Walcott. So they were those sort of the pioneers putting this project together. The way H3 Africa is set up such that um, Africans uh, take lead. I think it's a perfect model and should be emulated in other spheres, not just for genomics. Originally, we were calling it the African Genome Project, but that uh, slowly evolved into what we call History Africa today. Welcome made the decision to fund History Africa back in 2011 with the NIH, recognizing then, as it's still the case now, that there is not sufficient diversity and representation of African participants in genomics. It's, it's been able to offer um, the possibility of doing good science here in Africa. Africa has such this array of different um, lifestyles, different environments, different genetic variations, and understanding how those interact with each other here can help the people here, but discoveries that are made here can help the people around the world. There's an opportunity for us to understand some of those unique genes that exist in African context and people of Af African ancestry. Diseases that are transmitted by both parents are higher than those who are transmitted by only one parent. An example is sleeping sickness. It's an African problem. Uh, Leishmaniasis, which is another infectious disease. Um, it's a tropical problem. If we compare Uganda and Botswana, the genetic uh, structures of uh, the two populations are different, such that we actually respond very differently to drugs, to tests and to all these other things that uh, we didn't know before. We would assume uh, we are all Bantu, so we should behave the same when uh, we, we look at, for example, certain drugs. And those, I think, will change how we do things and hopefully usher in um, the era of precision medicine where um, I think the whole world is going. So we need for that geneticist, genetic specialist. We need to interpret the variation in the genome. At that time, we need bioinformaticists. And when we need to know the impact of the variation of the life of people, clinical psychologists and people that are experts in quality of life need to be involved. All those specialists, geneticists, bioinformaticists, cell biologists, genetic counselors, communications, and also clinical psychologists are the discipline that we want to see develop for the genetic medicine implementation in Africa. The working groups are very valuable in giving um, a voice and helping design projects uh, which are actually very relevant to the African context. One of our goals with the working group is to increase awareness, education of environmental exposures in the consortium and um, increase opportunity to add environmental exposure data to the HCRFCA projects. It's very important for the scientists to be able to provide that evidence, especially to the policymakers to say, this is how you should be negotiating on behalf of the continent, so that will enable them to have that global voice and also to make their, uh, what they say on behalf of the continent much stronger. African scientists bring a unique perspective because they understand their culture, they understand the people, and they understand the limitations of doing this kind of work. I think it's very difficult for lay people to understand um, what genomic research is about. And so one of the ways of looking at it is addressing health literacy and trying to explain to um, potential participants, patients, or whatever, with a, with a possible condition, or in our case, with sickle cell disease, 
what that inheritance actually means. In our network, as, as we do a community engagement uh, project, and so before we take a first sample from anyone, uh, we actually have a focus group where we engage the local communities, the stakeholders, the traditional leaders, the physicians, the patients, and so on and so forth. So we needed to find a way or a model that actually respects and still increases the possibility of using human biological samples as a resource to address important health issues. Discovery research is very important because when you discover a drug and you patent it, it's, you have some influence in how that drug is going to be used. That in itself gives, puts us in a different space. And so we need to tap into that. We, it's, it's a great resource. It's not only that we need to make sure that genomics is done to include Africans to ensure that any drugs or medicines or anything that's developed is actually going to work because there's already a number of been, variants being found in, in African populations whereby drugs that have already been developed just don't work. Traditionally, the stuff we've been doing in genetics and genomics is focused largely on samples that we could get access to readily, which was traditionally Western European uh, ancestries. If Africans are not involved in discovering genomic variants that are of some value, then again we will not have a voice in how whatever therapeutics uh, are developed from that genomic information. HV Africa is supporting young um, African researchers like myself through the several opportunities that they have granted us to be part of different research projects ongoing in different countries in Africa. There have been over 2,000 workshops and satellite meetings where fellows have benefited. The Asia Africa Coordinating Centre has facilitated over 200 travel awards which enable um, Asia Africa fellows to attend consortium meetings and present their work. We run really exciting training courses that are, are getting ever more complex in what we can teach in terms of, of biophotic skills and analytical skills, but also being able to reach a very wide audience across the continent. We support uh, students with school fees and a stipend. And uh, in, in the current cohort, we had 389 applications. Ten years ago, there were very little genetics in Africa, training in genetics, courses in genetics in Africa. We now have pretty well across Africa young individuals who have the training, and I think they're the basis of our sustainability. Australia Africa as a whole is laying a great foundation um, in terms of the resources that we would need to scale up. So we have three biorepositories that we can bank on and we, you know, we can expand on those. We have bioinformatics networks, um, so we are building the skills in that line. Um, and so for me, those, those are very um, motivating to know that we actually have some um, foundational work that we can build on. Research is so important, it's, it will contribute to the growth of Africa in terms of economy, and in terms of education. But we also need the genetics, the researchers to really have a voice to say we are equal in this, in this genetics research space. A major challenge is how do we engage African government and African private funders to take this very successful program and truly make it African. Genetics and genomics gives us tools that can help us, at least in the area of health, uh, help us develop new tools uh, and products and maybe change policies that can then help us um, deliver our healthcare services that are relevant for the African people at an uh, affordable price if we are able to actually do the innovation right here on the continent. So we need support, you know, from uh, African government. First of all, a recognition that this, this, this successful program is here and it's being led by Africans and African institutions and it's providing insight into the biology of African people in a way that we, we couldn't do before. 